Anyway, is it, are you actually trying to find Imagine? I mean, oh, honestly, if, you, if if he could write it again, he would say, Imagine there's no people <laughs> Did, oh, that are destroying the earth. Oh, he said that... What? What is this? It's the wrong song. No, no, no. It's, what is it, a remix? It's, this, it's the liberal version of Feel... This is what? It, it's the wrong song. No, it was. It was Imagine. The soundbite Imagine. Nah, you gotta do Lennon's Imagine. <laughs> no, I don't the have sound. I don't have. No, it is a soundbite. I imagined not, right there. Right? I could totally <laughs> see a communist utopia. No, that's what it My was. My daughter for. wants to see the movie Zootopia, and I said, You are not oh, seeing that. It is inappropriate. She's like, It's a cartoon. This Did I tell you about the Batman cartoon my children were watching? No. It was a cartoon movie. It was Batman remake because they were teenagers okay they redone this in all different ways all right yeah i fall asleep they're watching it your yeah. wife's watching it you missed the propaganda wife shut it down and sent everybody to bed <laughs> oh no what happened batman a girl and robin appear out from underneath the covers and oh, say oh no can we do that again Oh wow! It was a cartoon. Yes, that's the only. Way. It was rated PG thirteen. Oh yeah, yeah, PG thirteen. Hold yeah, on, thirteen year old kids shouldn't be seeing that. Well, you might be getting a little old because if you look at a lot of PG thirteen movies, I'm not green lighting it for thirteen year olds. <laughs> yeah, but by the time they're thirteen, they're gonna start thinking things. Not unless you feed it to them. Well, no. The they're going to start looking at the opposite sex. That's fine, but the opposite, opposite, and opposite, opposite? What about? Batman, it? Robin, and Wonder Woman? So wait a minute. Was was Batman a Batwoman? No. Batman, Robin, yeah. and Wonder Woman, or whoever the girl was. And the oh, and Batgirl, Catwoman. Catwoman? Yeah. Okay, so so she's in they bed. all three appear out from under the covers and said somebody says can we do, try that again? Oh wow, it's not cool. I, well, see, your children are nowhere near thirteen, no. not even remotely close. So yeah, I don't that's... know why I thought that was all right. Sue me. Okay, I made a mistake. You thought it was all right? No, well, you no, didn't know any no, better. I, I had no idea. I thought it was a cartoon. PG-13 for violence. I'm like, okay, they're beating each other anyways. Bugs Bunny is rated R for violence now. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, mean Wiley Coyote, come on. Right. So, I didn't think that I didn't think there was going to be some kind of uh, and, and that wouldn't even a double on entente. That wouldn't a double on. How do we get off on this tangent? I was talking I about the Confederate group, so Okay. Anyway, that's it is what it is. I've got a I've got an issue that's popped up with Cruz no pun intended. This week. Okay. Apparently, <clears throat> breaking news, a liberal organization in Texas has filed a formal complaint against Cruz and his campaign. Okay. A letter <clears throat> showed up at one of their doorsteps, and it's signed, and it's one of those open box windowed letters, so it's like... You can see the paper inside it, the little okay. window. Uh -huh. And at the top, it says, from Senator Ted Cruz. Okay. Then it's got the Which, little... Which, by the way, this is Texas's senator. So when you right. receive it, you're receiving mail from your own senator. senator. Okay. Right. And in the window box, it shows your name, your address, and all those dashed lines and... And it's striped to look like a check. Okay. And on the envelope, it says check enclosed. Oh, boy. Okay. So when you open it up, there's a check. And, and Brian's showing me on his monitor, and that looks exactly like what a check is supposed to look like. It says $45. The top left hand, which would be the name of your bank... Actually says Cruz for president, and it has a P.O. box. Then it says pay to the order of Cruz for president. So it's a check written to Cruz for president. Right. Okay. Then it says $45 and no cents. And then at the bottom, it's signed 
By Ted Cruz? By Ted Cruz. Okay. And also, there's even the numbers on it that make it look like a bank, uh, a, an account number. Yeah, check. Oh, yeah, yeah. Down at the bottom, the routing number and the, the, the account number, but it's all fake. You can clearly see. Yeah, that's not what no. a account number looks like. But right. it looks like it. And then up at the top, it has the date, January 26, 2016, and a check number. Check number 0514. So what is it exactly? If you zoom into the picture, it says, this check is a facsimile. Not redeemable or negotiable. Well, it has no cash value. But it's written to Cruise for President anyway, so you he you wouldn't be able to cash it anyway unless you own Cruise for President Corporation. Right. Incorporated, whatever. So the whole push was them sending this out to get people to think about writing Ted Cruz a check. This is this is not even very effective. I if mean, this is fake. If the, if this liberal organization created this, it's going to be awful. It's going to come out sooner or later. We mean liberal organization. This is this the liberal or, this liberal group is filing the formal complaint. Oh right, right. Mm-hmm. To uh, um, this, uh, the state of Texas. Yeah, just like uh, attorney gen- not attorney general. Um, anyway. They're filing this formal complaint against Ted Cruz. I mean, if they were the ones who created it or somebody created this, this was fake propaganda. Something popped up. It's all fake to, to slam Cruz. I don't. They're going to get caught sooner or later, and then it's going to be whisked away. Oh, no, no big deal. However, credibility problem. This is strike number two for Cruz. I mean, how, what's the conversation? We always talk about how we, we need to make videos. Oh, by the way, copyright. <laughs> Smith, we're, we're always thinking about making these videos where our daughters are the ringleaders of all the policy. Yeah, yeah. And, and make it look like they're actually debating it at a long uh, conference table, you know, back and forth on what, what should be the policy. Blah. Imagine the case of this check. Where either Cruz himself or a very high-ranking person in his uh, campaign greenlights this. I mean, what's the the debate look like, or what does the discussion look like? Like, hey, check this out. We'll we'll send these checks. They're not real checks, but they'll look exactly like checks, right? Right. And they'll be written to Cruz, you know, and then it'll be signed by Cruz. It'll just look like a check, but it'll be to Cruz. And and when they receive it, like. They'll be like, oh, look, I got money. Oh, no, it's not money for me. It's money for Cruz. Well, I guess it, that'll, that'll make them think they should write a check to Cruz. Like, how do you? How does this happen? And then how does a person listening to this convoluted story say, wow, you know, I could see the trickery and how, how well it works. Okay, man, go ahead. What are they doing? How does this even work? How does, how does sending a check to somebody and making them think or feel like they're receiving money only to find out, oh, no, I'm supposed to send money. How is this working psychologically? And why would you greenlight something like that? It's like they're playing with people's emotions because they can. Are they thinking that they're going to look, oh, clever, that's clever. You know what? For your cleverness, I'll go ahead and send a check for $45. Is that what they're hoping (laughs) that people are going to think when they receive this, this fake, like, emotional... Well, there's a huge Trickery. there's a huge flyer that I, I can't see, and they haven't posted the flyer. Apparently, that's part of the complaint, but it'll be heard. The formal complaint will be heard. Uh, you know, they, they'll look at it and see if that they need to take uh, steps further on that. But wow. I, you got me. You really, you got me. And and the problem that I have is that this would make number two for Cruz. On, he's he's you know what I was thinking on the way here to do this show today, I was thinking of a convoluted defense of Cruz and his <laughs> and his antics. You ready to hear this? Okay. All right. It's kind of the Democrat defense, if you will. Okay. And here's how it works. And you remember we talk about how the reason they liked Bill Clinton and his lying was because he was such a good liar, and they prefer a liar. Oh, yes. Correct, this is correct. this is kind of an offshoot of that. All right. So here's my defense and see, see what you think of it. The president of the United States 
has to do a lot of dealing with a lot of different entities that aren't operating under any rules whatsoever because they're international countries. These are different countries. They're leaders of other countries. They're not bound by any rules other than pressure from other countries, like kind of like a peer pressure thing. Right. That's literally what what governs the interactions between countries. Okay. And when you uh, when you see Cruz trying to get elected by these emotional trickery, it makes you wonder. Hey, when it comes down to being president, there's there's these crazy propaganda wars that are happening happening at all times between countries. Wouldn't you want somebody, the one that does it best? In other words, if I can trick a majority of Americans to vote for me, isn't that an endorsement for my ability to trick the world into supporting me against uh, other countries in my cause, against their cause? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a convoluted way of, of saying, hey, maybe this is a good thing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it all goes along the lines. Or it's, it, by hook or by crook, you win at all cost. Right. But then the argument against that would be, hey, if I can convince people that my cause is greater because I'm the honest person, um, that, that people will just trust me because they trust my character, then when it comes down to, for me to make a stand on the world stage... I will get more support based on the fact that I don't have to I don't even have to make my case other than to say where I stand because they'll say, "Well, you know what? I know that guy's a good guy and I trust him." Right. So I will go along with what he stands for because I trust that it's the right stance because I trust his character as opposed to somebody like Cruz who's going around and he's able to garner support for his cause on the world stage based on the fact that he tricked more, more people into following him than the other guy tricked to follow him. Is it trickery or is it persuasion? Well, it's not when you send a fake check to people's house. <laughs> you are persuading people of? There's no persuading of, of any sort there. Yes, my name is Guido. <laughs> I will persuade you to pay your debt. <laughs> to society I will so, persuade you I don't know I personally if oh. you want to know my personal take Pers is, my personal take is this Trump has already proven over the course of many many years that whatever uh, thing he's doing has worked for his companies correct because he is a wild success story he's not just oh you know he's a millionaire and people complain, oh, he, he took a loan for, for, from his dad when he was early on for 100000 Some people say 10, that he got a start 000. because his, he inherited all that from his dad. Well, whatever. But, I, but he's gone gotta so much further. you got to keep it going, though. you got to keep it going. Not only did he keep it going, but he expanded it way beyond what he was given by his dad. Right. And there, there is two brothers and a sister who took over a father's uh, machine shop here in Cincinnati. And he's been running it for 50 years. Okay. Wildly successful. $50 million a year company. Okay. Within six months, they've split that in half. Oh, no. The children who are in their 30s and 40s are running it in the ground. Yeah. And that's actually typical. And they've been working for their father all their life. So it's not like this... Business is new to them. There is a, a fourth child that's a boy, but he said he doesn't want anything to do with it and left. Okay. okay. The other three kids, they're running it straight in the ground, and the suppliers say that we don't want to deal with you. We want to deal with your father. Oh, and is he still alive? Yeah. He's oh, like, the father is? Yeah, okay. he's, he's like, I'm so done with this. I oh. Need, I need a vacation. He says. I need a vacation. I think he's like 70s. Well, he probably he's is, 70s. right? 70s, yeah. I mean, there's this misconception among a, a majority, a vast majority of people who question capitalism that uh, there there's this... Sure, it's nice to start off with several million dollars. That's nice. But there's this misconception that if anybody... Anybody who gets to start off with that giant starting capital 
is going to make it. They're going to be fine. They're going to be they're going to be sitting on uh, uh, easy street for the rest. Of